Hi guys, this is Andy with uh, Falco K9 TV. Here I am in Svolin of the uh, Slovak Republic. Behind me is the castle, the, the, the Svolin castle. And uh, we are here selecting dogs for right now the Orange Police Department, Palm Springs Police Department, and a couple other customers that are looking for security dogs and protection dogs. We're having a good time over here. This is one of the, uh, the downsides of my business that I got to travel to Europe and, and uh, you know, it's really a big pain to eat some of the, uh, the local cuisine and uh, partake in some of the, uh, the wine that's made here uh, by a gentleman and we call it The Cave and uh, his name is Yosef. You'll be seeing a, a couple clips of that. You'll be seeing us testing the dogs in a real life castle that was made in the 13th century. And I'll give you a link on our uh, newsletter and our website that you can go to it and, uh, and uh, learn a little about the history of the, uh, the castle that we are at. All right, so I'm a little chilly now and uh, it's hard for me to talk because my lips are cold. So uh, enjoy the video and uh, let us know when we can find a dog for you. We find our best dogs right now, right here in the Slovak Republic. So take care, talk to you later, bye. As you saw in the beginning, we uh, actually started our adventure in Budapest, Hungary. Here we are in the Svolden of the uh, Slovak Republic. As you can tell, we're not against having some fun. There we go. Here we're just trying to get a view of uh, Svolden from a higher point to give you all a, uh, a better look at what it looks like. Beautiful countryside. Uh, we just got lucky there that it started to snow after we'd been there for a little while, so it adds a little uh, ambiance to the uh, to the city. Here we are standing for a little snapshot. Are you ready? Come on. And now it's time Is to this? test the dogs. Here we are on the uh, first day of testing in uh, a castle by the name of Bzovic. It is in the city of Bzovic, actually, so hence the name. Uh, the great thing about using this castle is that we were able to use the, um, the innards of the castle to test the dog's environmental um, status. Each dog uh, went through the same routine, see if it went up open stairs, into dark rooms, uh, through tight places with people standing in front of it. Uh, here I'm testing the dog for civil agitation. Notice I don't have a sleeve on or a whip or a stick. And then we go directly into testing the dog's bite. I want to check and see how the dog looks on the bite. Is he um, nervous? Is he confident? Uh, I want to see how full and deep his mouth is on the, uh, on the sleeve and what he looks like while he's on the bite and while I'm threatening with the stick. Before we did all this, and because of uh, due to time, uh, we do test the dog's play and desire to hunt. And uh, just because it's uh, not very exciting, we didn't show it here. But uh, we do several repetitions of the dog chasing down a ball and hunting for the ball, both inside uh, the building and outside. Uh, we also want to do some runaways to see how the dog's bite is away from the handler. A courage test, just to see if the dog has any fear of uh, a decoy running at him. Now keep in mind, uh, these dogs don't know me, so uh, they've never bit me before. So one of the things we'll see is either a drop off on the dog's desire to bite, or no change at all, and that's what we're looking for. Absolutely no change at all. This is another day of uh, testing. We do it actually on uh, Peter's property. And uh, we just uh, want to see, uh, get a second look at each one of the dogs and see any strengths or weaknesses that we may have missed on the you know, while we are decoying or some of the stuff that we are doing in the building. It's really hard to see everything that you want to see if you're the one decoying. Now don't get me wrong, you learn a lot from decoying and, and being there for the bite, but you also learn a lot by watching the dogs from a little bit of a distance. Some of the other tests you're not able to see is a socialization test where I take each dog uh, away from Peter or the handler if the handler happened to bring it to the field and I would take it off to a distance and I touch the dog in the ears around the flank area pick him up and see what his reaction is I gave him a couple uh, somewhat hard corrections but not overly hard corrections just to see what the dog's reaction is to uh, that type of thing in its life 
Uh, we also do a building search inside of a dark building with slick floors. Uh, we do loud noise testing. Uh, we can't show, again, all of those due to time and because inside the dark building we don't want to use a, uh, a light because then that would take away from uh, the test, obviously. The whip you see there is probably not as loud as a gunshot, but uh, I do like to see what the dog's reaction is around a whip. Quite often that stimulates the dog, so it's not maybe the truest test of how the dog handles loud noise, but it's, uh, you know, it's a test uh, nonetheless. You can see I stand there and uh, take a pretty good look at what's going on with the dog. Again, I realize that the uh, Peter is an outstanding decoy. He knows how to bring the best in the dog. But uh, again, we've already done the other testing where we saw how the dogs were on an alternate decoy, uh, uh, giving them different looks uh, as far as the decoy is concerned and speed and that kind of thing. And again, we're just trying to look at the dog. We want to see the speed and you know his desire to take the sleeve and that kind of stuff how he handles pressure even though it's from somebody that he already knows and of course there's always time for a little rest and relaxation after we get done testing this is one of our favorite places to go this is Joseph right here uh, he's um, third or fourth generation I can't remember uh, wine uh, maker uh, from this very cave this cave is uh, over a hundred years old uh, his father and his grandfather both made wine here uh, he does it the old-fashioned way one of the, our favorite wines is a wine called Devon, which you just saw a close-up of. Now the trip home wasn't as fun as the rest of the trip. This is where it all started here in Budapest. We were late for our flight, so we were late to New York. And Rika Kish, right here in Budapest, helped us get home. She got us booked on a plane so that we could get all the dogs home, and uh, she was a savior and a representative from Delta, so we thank her very much. Okay, take two. <laughs> I forgot the record button. Here we are in JFK Airport, staying over Bye. overnight. It's deja vu. <laughs> we're four days later after we were supposed to be home. Here we are we're camping out in the airport because we love life. They're the legends of Slovakia. Slovakia will never be the same. We got Falco, puppies, uh, Emma, uh, 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 Sharona. Like it. Uh, <laughs> Flash, Alex, and Phil. And the legends. Phil. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. Smile, Calvin. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> so, four days later, two days in Budapest. Um, one night overnight at JFK Airport, and finally here um, on a Thursday when we were supposed to be home on a Monday, we were taken to a VIP room and allowed to sit and kind of recover for our final flight home uh, after being uh, held over one more flight. We actually boarded a plane and headed home to California with all eight dogs and uh, four people. So there's our adventure, Slovakia, 2009. All right, setting off from New York, and hopefully we won't uh, get uh, booted again. Talk to you later. Bye.